Sarabjit Kaur Nangra, VP Research at Angel Broking, joins us on the show right now. And Sarabjit, even though the street was going in extremely tempered in terms of expectations, Lupin has disappointed even that. that is yeah, that's true. Actually, sales have come in in line mostly. Yeah. It's, it's just the uh, net profit which is a miss. And I, as you rightly pointed out, it's more to do with uh, uh, with the uh, OPM. And I guess I've not seen the numbers in detail, but I guess uh, that it's more to do with R and D than uh, operational business actually. Sir Abhijit, the fact that the company in the second quarter has undertaken some price hikes, that is yeah. going to be read well in the coming quarters. Don't you think that that's going to be something that the street will also be looking at? Yeah, that's true. See, in pharma companies, quarter numbers don't matter so much. So, uh, I mean, unless it's structural, which is a very rare incidence in the case of a company, uh, unless there's a bigger issue at hand. But uh, these variations, because of a lack of approval or slow approval, these tend to happen uh, once in a while. So I guess uh, the street has already taken a note. That's why the stock is actually, in spite of even Q1 not being that great, uh, trading uh, actually uh, at a decent valuation, actually. So I think uh, those things are uh, don't matter that much uh, significantly, but... Uh, uh, I guess uh, what matters more is uh, whether it's uh, how long this pain will continue. As well, from Kotak is on the phone line with us. But I'll tell you what, ladies, let's just wait by, get in some more details on Lupin while the stock as well has settled lower, a good 3.5%. But Hemendra Azari as well with us. Remember, access numbers as well came in at the same time as Lupin. And Hemendra, an inline set of numbers for access 4,062 crore rupees on the NII. The PAT has come in at 1,910, which again is bang in line with what the street was expecting. We're yet to hear, though, on the asset qualities. What is your sense on where the asset quality is going to be for Axis this quarter. Just like it's net profit, it's asset quality also will meet analyst expectations. My only issue is what is the relevance of these numbers really? Because just a few moments ago, another business channel has said that uh, the stand standard charter has put in you know, legal conditions uh, for the SR holding company. And Axis Bank reportedly has a $300 million exposure. So how have they classified this $300 million exposure? So if they are to classify it as NPA, you see there'll be a very major dent in their earnings and a huge increase in their uh, bad loan. So the point is, although they have met analyst expectations, which they have consistently done so over many quarters, what is the real relevance of these numbers that they are reporting? And in my view, you know, you have to take this uh, uh, factoring, what is the, the state of the SR holding company, the SR group exposure that Access Bank has, and many other myriad uh, districts, corporate groups that Access Bank has exposure to. If they were to classify all this, uh, I'm sure that uh, it will not meet analyst expectations both on net profit as well as on bad debts. 3.8% is the gross NPA. And, uh, of course, as you said, lots of those questions do remain unanswered. But I think Lupin is the number to focus on right now. And pretty much every parameter, it's been pretty disastrous. So the street wasn't going in with these expectations because remember from all of the markets especially in the US uh, you know except India it's been lackluster growth and uh, the the most of the expectations were that it would be a, a lower set of numbers and there you have it in terms of the earnings scorecard it's been below estimates on all of those fronts there's been the higher tax rate as well as the base impact which has also probably led the profits to be lower this time around let's go across to Darshan who's standing by 